Yes, I am wearing pajamas, but hear me out. 98% of the time that I film videos, I am wearing pants like this. Booyah. <laughs> pajamas all the way. Okay, so that's not what this video is about. Today's video is going to be how correctional officers disrespect inmates. Now, hear me out. I will also be doing the other side of the coin because there are two different sides of this here. I will also be sharing how inmates disrespect officers, but just for today's video, we're going to be talking about how officers disrespect inmates. Now, <laughs> This is my own personal take on it from the prisons I have been to. My intention here is never to create division. My intention is just to share my experience with you guys, share the things that I thought were right and wrong about prison, and, you know, just kind of shed light on it. Now, with that being said, I am not complaining about prison. I'm not whining about prison. I deserved every day of my prison sentence. I was wrong. I took responsibility for my actions. I served my time. And now I'm here to share with you guys what that time looked like in the hopes that we can create change. So please go into this video with an open heart and an open mind. And uh, yeah, if you're a correctional officer and you want to defend these behaviors to me, because you have a different take on it or your opinion is different, that's what the comment section down below is for. We can have an open conversation about it. So with that being said, let's get into today's video. The number one way that I was disrespected by correctional officers was something that if you ask anyone that has been to prison and you ask, hey, did the correctional officers ever disrespect you? And if they did, how so? Everyone will be like, this is what they did. Everyone, everyone that has ever been to prison knows that they do this and they, Inmates really don't like it, which is kind of why correctional officers do it, in my opinion. Number one, there are three things a correctional officer will call an inmate. Those three things are your last name, your number, or inmate. They're not going to say Miss Kent, Mrs. Kent, whatever. They're not going to say Jessica. They're going to call me Kent, 711548, or inmate. That's it. I saw plenty of correctional officers that straight up refused to call me anything besides inmate. Now, this is just something that irritates every inmate and the correctional officers know that. It's just a sign of disrespect to us. Now, um, I don't, I don't really know the thought process behind saying inmate. I'll, I'll respond to my last name. I'll respond to that. It's just really, Ugh, it's just one of those things that like irritates everyone that has been called inmate. So there are so many situations that I could just think off the top of my head where a correctional officer would be like, back up inmate, coming through inmate, get in line inmate, be quiet inmate. And it was always said in a disrespectful manner, like always. There was always tension behind saying this, like back up inmate. Like, ugh, it was just, it drove me crazy. And all of my friends that have been to prison or are currently in prison, it's just one of those things that bothers them. And, and it bothered me too. <clears throat> we would be on the phone and I'd be talking to my mom, you guys, and a correctional officer would come by and be like, get off the phone, inmate. And my mom would hear that and it would just stress her out. And it was just one of those things where like, my mom is already concerned because I'm in prison. You know what I mean? So your family stresses while you're in there, but to hear a correction officer come by and you hear that on the phone and now I have to hang up. I can't be like, oh, I'm sorry, mom. Like I can't explain. I have to hang up. If I do not hang up, then the correction officer is going to, what's it called? Um, disobeying a direct order is what that's called. If you don't hang up right away or in the time frame that they want you to hang up, which is like instantly. So you could barely say goodbye. And if you don't, like I said, it's disobeying a direct order and they will write you up for that. And it's just like one of those things. It's like, ugh, ugh, my name is Kent. Like call me, call me Kent or whatever. Call me by my last name, but don't call me inmate. I really couldn't stand that. There would be officers that would only call you by your number too. So I'm going to get into the second way that correctional officers have disrespected me. This was at mail call. Oh, and there was this guard that I didn't like him. He didn't like me. And the reason why he didn't like me is because I called him out. He was at the men's unit across the street. He was transferred to the female unit. So he came in day one on the job to my unit with a black eye. Oh, and of course, in true Jess form, I couldn't even like control it. It just came out. It just came out. 
he came up to a table that I was at and we were writing letters. I was just kind of chit chatting it up with the people that I was associate with. And one of the girls was just kind of being really nice to him. I mean, he was a good looking officer, so whatever. You knew, whatever. And I know you're not brand new, first of all, because of what your uniform looks like. A brand new officer is usually going to be extor extorted, girl, no escorted by a seasoned officer when they're brand new. So you will see a correctional officer being trained and they're alongside a seasoned vet, okay? So I knew he wasn't brand new because of the way his uniform looked. He had his name, he had, you know, certain things on his uniform that said, I'm not new, and he was also not with another correctional officer. So one of the girls asked, oh, are you new? And I said, no, he came from Grimes so nice to him because I'm like I want him to go away <laughs> I just want him to go away I didn't like the officers like coming up to us and talking to us and I was just I want you away from me okay so maybe it's cool for this girl to talk to this officer and she's cool with that I'm not cool with that like I have a reputation and that reputation is not fraternizing with the enemy <laughs> that's how my mindset was okay so I'm just like I just want him to go away like please just go away and I couldn't even like control what comes out of my mouth next. It just came out and I was like, yeah, you couldn't fucking handle it at Grimes. So he sent you over here. Like, we see your eye. Huh. And he's like, yeah, should have seen the other guy. And he kind of snapped back at me and I'm like, okay, but they transferred you over here, right? So I'm like, whatever. Like, I, I called him out and he didn't like me. He didn't like the fact that I called him out in front of everyone, that he got transferred over here because he couldn't handle it and he got his ass kicked. Like, ugh. Okay, so already we're off to a bad start. Now this is mail call. Several weeks had passed and the officer and I had exchanged several like sarcastic comments back and forth and it was just kind of known that like, I, d I don't like you. I don't like that you couldn't handle it over there so now you're over here giving us shit. Like, I just didn't like him. I mean, I didn't like any officer, but this officer in particular, I just didn't like. <laughs> oh, like there's a reason why you got punched in the face, okay? Anyway, I... <laughs> I was at mail call and I didn't get mail that often and the correctional officers know if you get mail or you don't. So I'm at mail call and for some reason this officer is just um, saying the numbers and not saying the names and it drove me crazy. Like you see the name, then you see the number. Just say your names. So he's like rattling off the number. He gets to my number and I had mail and he says my number and I went to walk up to get my mail. He takes it, you guys, and goes like that. And I'm just like, are you kidding? Now, you should not talk crap to correctional officers. If you ever find yourself in that situation, you should be respectful, yes or no, sir. Like, you should not have an attitude like that. I would not recommend it because you never know how the officer is going to react. You don't know if they could lock you up for being, for insolence to a staff member or being disrespectful or whatever. So he threw my letter and I just, I stepped back in line, or I stepped back in the little group that was forming for a mail call. I stepped back. I just stood there the rest of the time. Now, it's bothering me, but I'm not going to let you know that it's bothering me. So I just stand there until everyone leaves, and I walk away, and I leave that letter on the ground. <laughs> because you're not going to see me pick it up off the ground. Like, nope, I'm going to wait. Now, it's killing me because I never get mail, and like, I want this letter right now. <laughs> But you're not going to see that. You're not going to see me get upset that you just threw my mail down. Now, I've seen officers do this on several different, in several different scenarios where they take the inmate's property and they throw it on the floor. That is the ultimate sign of disrespect. We have very few items. Mail call is very important to inmates. Our commissary is important to us. The little things that we possess and own are important to us. And uh, my pride was not going to let me let him see me pick that up off the floor. I eventually did when I thought he wasn't looking. I'm sure he saw me pick it up, but I was just so annoyed and that was, uh, yeah, the second way a correctional officer disrespected me. Third way a correctional officer disrespected me was actually in a county jail. I was pregnant. I had been at the jail for some time and I went in basically after conception, right? So I was only a few weeks pregnant, two, three weeks pregnant when I got arrested and we didn't find out until a few weeks had passed and I took a test, right? Well, I was there for so long. I was there for, you know, six months and I looked six months pregnant. So one of the guards comes up to me. She's got bars, okay? One of the correctional officers comes up to me in front of everyone in intake when I was being taken out for a medical visit. And she said, 
Did you come in here pregnant? Or is this a correctional officer's baby? You guys, I wanted to crawl under the floor. Like I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. There's people being booked in. It's packed in intake and I'm trying to go for my medical visit. And she's like, is this it? Correctional officer's baby? And I was just like mortified, like so embarrassed. That comment actually led to an investigation where I had to be questioned by the sergeant if this was a correctional officer's baby. And I was just like, are you kidding me? I came in here pregnant, are you insane? And I was so humiliated. And I think there were a lot of humiliating factors when I was pregnant. It's very difficult to be a female in, in jail because you get a lot of like really shitty comments here and there, but that one was like, that one took the cake and that was like hella embarrassing for me. The next way the correctional officers will disrespect inmates is when they're leaving prison. You guys, oh, this has happened to me almost every single time I have ever left a jail or a prison. The officer would say to me, and this happened so much, I've heard plenty of other people say this, when you're going to leave prison and you're walking out of Sally Port and you're excited, you're nervous, there's a lot of emotions going through your brain when you're leaving a facility, Almost every single time, the officer would say, see you in a little bit, Kent, catch you back, I'll hold your mail for you, like, see you in a few months, and they just, like, they put that evil on you, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> they, like, put that on you, and they're like, oh, I'll see you in a minute, oh, you'll fail, and they just talk crap to you like that. Like, listen, I'm already nervous enough. I already know all of the obstacles that I have to face in the street because I've been thinking about it for years. I've been sitting up in this cell thinking about how I'm going to get out. Now I finally get to leave and you're like, oh, I'll see you. I'll be seeing you back here. I'll give you six months. I'll hold your mail. And they talk crap in some way and it's just like, dude, come on. Come on with that. Like, you have no idea what I just went through. Like, this is really hard. It's really emotionally draining to leave prison. And I know it, sh it should just be just a really happy, exciting time, but it's just really difficult emotionally because you don't know what your life is gonna be like on the outside. You don't know if you're gonna be able to make it. You don't know if you're gonna be able to come back. So to have a correctional officer like tell you that you're gonna fail, is just a really disrespectful thing and it sucks and they shouldn't do that. Another way that correctional officers will disrespect inmates is by either talking to the people that come to visit you, like telling, um, they'll tell certain things here or there, or they'll just straight up lie. Like I've had my friends tell me, this correctional officer, this female correctional officer talked to my husband, talked to my boyfriend and told him I have a girlfriend in here. They will straight up lie to your loved ones that are coming in about the things that you are doing or not doing, right? So sometimes they'll straight up lie or they'll talk crap to your loved ones and that really sucks. Sometimes the correctional officers, when you get a visit, if, some, if it's summer, it's like 100 degrees and it's summer and the correctional officer doesn't like what you're wearing, they will turn you around and say, go get a hoodie, go get a long sleeve shirt, go get this, go get that. There's a dress code and I understand there needs to be a dress code, but our family drives hours to see us in the summer when it's scorching. Why can't I wear a, a shirt? And I've seen a lot of women that are bigger bust size women get turned around just for having big boobs, you guys. Like this happens, this happens, this happens. If your boobs are too big, they're gonna think that you're bringing something in. It's crazy. So I've seen women get turned around just for having bigger boobs. Now, in the last facility that I was at, I was 1,300 miles away from home. I did not have family. So another way that correctional officers would disrespect me when it came to visits is they would see I would never get a visit. I didn't get a visit in two and a half years. Not one person came to see me because there wasn't anyone to come see me. I didn't have family, I didn't have friends. All of my friends in Arkansas were either deported in state prison or in federal prison. And all of my family was in New York, 1,300 miles away. So I didn't get visits. So I many times had correctional officers come into the unit on visit day, would see me reading a book or see me at the table or doing something and they'd say, huh, no one's coming to see your ass, huh? No, no visit today, Kent? Shocker. And they would talk crap like that. Like, what is the purpose of that? What is the purpose to put me down and tell me on a day where I'm already a little sad because no one's coming to see me, what's the purpose to make me feel even worse about myself? 
You're not there to talk shit to me. You're not there to disrespect me. You're not there to put me down and make me feel like less of a human. You're not there to upset me. You're there to make sure I don't hurt anyone else. You're there to keep me out of society because that is my punishment. My punishment is having my freedom taken away. My punishment is not the mental abuse, the physical abuse, the, like none of that is okay. So, I didn't want to make this video and talk about the physical abuse. I just wanted to talk about straight up disrespect. And, and that was one that just really got to me. And they know it gets to you. They know it bothers you. And that's why they say it. The last way that a correctional officer has disrespected me and disrespected so many other people is when I was in segregation. I almost called it jail. Like in prison, we call segregation jail. So I was in segregation because I had gotten into a fight. I was pepper sprayed. I will leave it on the card up here if I can find it. It's really old, but I did tell that story. Uh, so I was pepper sprayed and I was taking a seg. Well, you can shower every third or fourth day, depending on the facility and depending on what the hell happened that day. Some days you, you don't get a shower because someone has decided to flood the tier, whatever the situation is. So it depends. Sometimes you don't get a shower every third day and you have to bird bath, which is like disgusting. Anyway, moving on. So I was taken to the shower one afternoon and they they cuff you up and they do a two officer transport to go to the shower. So you can only have like your towel over your thing and your soap like in your like pants folded over. You can't carry anything because you're in cuffs. So you have a bar soap and a towel, nothing more, nothing less. That's all you can carry, right? So uh, they took me to the they took me to the shower in the morning. They left me sitting there for hours because I said, I'm done. You don't tell them that you're done, but I was just standing there for like forever it felt like and I was getting really tired. The segregation showers are really, really tiny cages with a little faucet and a curtain. And if you're tall, like, I don't know what you're gonna do because the curtain only comes to like here. So uh, they left me in there for hours hours to the point where I am really, really tired. My legs are tired. I can't sit down because it's a dirty shower floor. Like it's wet, it's dirty, it's nasty. If I sit down, my clothes are gonna get dirty. I had to stand there for hours and hours and hours because probably five hours because I said, I'm done. And they took that as, excuse me, inmate, you're gonna stand there. They ignored me, you guys. They weren't busy. They were just sitting at their little desk. There was two officers in segregation. They were sitting at their desk, ignoring me not doing anything, not doing runarounds, not checking the inmates, not doing anything. They didn't do the tour around to see if everyone was okay for hours. Now you're supposed to, you're supposed to check on people to make sure that they're okay. Segregation is no joke. It is designed to mentally break you down. These officers really need to be paying attention to their, you know, to the segregation cells to make sure everyone's alive, everyone's okay, no one's trying to harm themselves but they don't, they just don't. So that was just a really difficult thing for me to be disrespected and, and hurt. There are plenty of other times where physically they would disrespect you, but, uh, or physically they would harm you. But today I'm just gonna leave it as the just disrespect like insults or whatever. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this story time. Please know that I don't hate correctional officers. I know that it's a really difficult job. It's a job I could never do. It's a job that a lot of people could never do. I think sometimes when I'm sharing these stories, people are like, oh, I bet you hate police officers. I bet you hate correctional officers. I don't, I don't. I think there are a lot of bad apples in the bunch, but they're all there are also good correctional officers that care about inmates, that do want to help them. So I don't want you guys to hear the story and think that I'm just bashing all correctional officers because I never want to like blanket everyone and say everyone in this population is bad. I've just seen a lot of bad ones. I've seen more bad ones than good ones, unfortunately. And in my personal experience, the good ones that have a heart don't last. They quit because it's so emotionally draining and it's really difficult for them to work in that environment, which I totally understand. It's a hard job. It's also really hard to be an inmate. There are two sides to the coin here. So again, my intention is never to create division. It's just to share my story. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this story time. Stay safe, stay sober, do not break the law, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.